This is paper 1, video 9 for the February mock. The first topic we're going to look at here is going to be cumulative frequencies. So if this topic comes up in an exam, it will always be given in two separate tables. The first table showing the frequencies, for in this case ages, of people in an IT department. And the second table will need to be the cumulative frequency as shown here. Well, the cumulative frequency is simply a running total of the frequencies in the table above. So for all the people 15 to 25, that's just a case of reading off the 15 to 25 group on the table above. So that would give us 44. The next one down look is 15 to 35. So that would include everybody in this top group and the second group. So all of these together. So 45, sorry, 44 plus 56, that will give us 100. The next group down adds on this group as well, so 134. We then have to add on 19, so this would give us 153. And finally this group, the 7 group, because here we are including everybody, so we get 160. Before we can do any of the questions below to do with median or interquartile range, we actually need to draw the graph. In an exam, you will normally be given this, pre-drawn but just in case this is the sort of thing that it would look like with cumulative frequency going up the side so this needs to go up as high as the cumulative frequency column of the table we just used and along the bottom we would need the ages so if we just bring that table back in or at least enough so we can see the numbers we get something for the 15 to 25 group with a cumulative frequency of 44. So for that, we go to the end of the groups. We go along to 25 for the first one, and then up to 44. Put yourself a small dot, small mark, so you can see that one. The next group goes up to 35. So we go to 35 on the age section, at the bottom, and then up to 100. So 100 is here, we put ourselves a dot where those meet up. Up to 45 for the next one and 134. So going up 45, up to 134, so that would be somewhere just here. The next group goes all the way up to 55, so we go to 55 on the bottom, but up to 153 this time, so 153. Let's put us somewhere up here. And the final group goes up to 65 and it has a total, or a cumulative frequency, should I say, of 160. So let's bring this back in so we can see all the points. So 50, 65 going up to 160 will give us a point just there. In order to get the second mark for actually the, doing the cumulative frequency graph, you would then need to do as best as you possibly can a single, smooth, continuous curve that passes through all the points that you've just plotted. Now this will give me full marks in the exam. If you wanted, you could then take that all the way down to the bottom, but that's not actually necessary. The only reason I'm having this is because I've seen the question coming up and it will need it. In the exam, I don't think you will need to do that. You can just stop at the very first point that you drew. So the two questions we've been asked from this, we need to find the median age of IT employees. Well, the median is the middle person. If this graph represents 160 people, the middle person is going to be the 80th one. So in order to read off the median, we go to 80 on the cumulative frequency scale, Draw yourself a line using a ruler. Make sure you're actually drawing it on. Don't just read it off until you hit the curve. And then as accurately as you possibly can, wherever it hits the curve, draw yourself a line going straight down. And at whatever point it hits the axis, that is going to be the median. So in this case, it'd be 31. So we'd say here that the median age is 31. The second part of the question it's asked us to do is interquartile range. So back to the graph. 
The interquartile range is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Let's do the lower quartile first. If the median is the 80th person, the lower quartile will be half of that, so the 40th person. So if we do the same again and read a value from 40 as accurate as we possibly can, in my example, I think that gives us 23 for my lower quartile. So here, lower quartile. The upper quartile will be halfway between the median and that 160, the biggest value. So halfway between those two is 120. So I draw myself a line again at 120 using a ruler. So here, be my upper quartile. Wherever that hits your curve, draw a line going straight down. I believe with mine, we get an upper quartile of 40. So the interquartile range is the difference between these two. The difference between 40 and 23 is 17. So I'm going to put on here that the interquartile range is 17. The next topic we're going to look at is volumes of shapes. Now the question we've decided to go through on the video is all to do with this, a frustrum. Now a frustrum is basically a truncated cone. It's a cone with a little bit of the top of the cone cut off. In order to do a shape like this, it's normally better to try and visualise the full shape. So if I were to draw on the rest of this cone, as it were, up at the top, what we've actually got, in order to work out the volume of this frustrum, this bit at the bottom, is our best bet is to work out the volume of the full cone, with this top bit added on, to work out the volume of the small cone that we've cut away, and then take that away from the big cone. So we're going to do two calculations for the cone. We're going to do everything here in terms of pi, as this is a non-calculator paper. So in order to start, what we need to look at is I need to know the actual height of the cones. Because at the moment, all I've got is the height of this little frustrum. Well, if you look at the two radii here, because we know this is part of one bigger, larger cone, we know that these two cones, this small one and the big one, are similar. Therefore, because the radius of this is 6, and the radius of this small cone here is 3, it simply means that the cone at the top, all the lengths on it, are half as big as the length of the big cone. This doesn't work for area though, so just be very careful. It is only the length that is half. So if the lengths are halved, that tells me, by doing a bit of looking at the shape, that if this is 5, that's half of the entire shape. Therefore, this is also 5, meaning the full cone from top to bottom would have to be 10 centimetres. In order to now work out the volume of the two cones, I'm going to start with the large cone. We need to know the volume uh, formula. The volume formula that we're going to use is 1 third pi r squared height. It might be worthwhile trying to memorise that for the exam. For the larger cone, we would therefore have 1 third times pi times radius squared. So the larger cone has a radius of 6, so 6 squared times 10. This would give us 1 third times pi. 6 squared is 36, times that by 10 is 360. Let's put 360 there. A third of 360 is 120. I'm just divided 360 by 3. So it becomes 120. Because we're leaving our answer in terms of pi, it actually comes out as just 120 pi. The smaller cone, we're going to do the exact same thing. So one third times pi times radius squared times height. So for the smaller cone, the radius here is 3. So we're going to get one third times pi times 3 squared times by the height of just this smaller cone is 5. If we then start neatening this up, we get 1 third times pi. 3 squared is 9. 
Multiply that by 5 would give us 45. And then 1 third of 45 is just 15. And it's 15 lots of pi. So if this is the volume of the larger cone, here is the volume of the smaller cone, to work out the volume of this frustrum, so the bit that's left when we chop that top cone off, we would have to do 120 pi, take away 15 pi, which would leave us as our final answer of 105 pi. The final topic that we're going to look at in this video is all to find, do with finding exact values of trig. Now the best thing you can probably do in this exam is try and memorise these different values. So here in this little table, for instance, if I wanted to find cos 90, I would look at cos and 90, see where they match up, and it's zero. So for instance, cos 90 is zero. Tan 60, so I go to the tan row, which is here, look for the 60 degrees, and it's root three. We will, in the run up to the real exam, go through more methods for finding this, but for now, it's probably a good idea to try and memorise some of these. Potentially the line that says tan. 